Hi, my name is Curtis Casados. We're here at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Infamous Coto with the big sweeping right turn. And we are here for the Code 19 Apex AI Summit. We're hosting this event to get industry leaders in different fields to come see how we're blending all of our technology and hardware together. So we have the software stack, uh, Mavii, running the autonomous software, and then we have our hardware stack, where it's the LiDARs, the cameras, on the sensor car of the McLaren Artura, as well as other demos and panels. So that's what we're doing here at the AI Summit in Austin, Texas. Yesterday was kind of our, our prep day. And we've done these events where we go out on track, collect this data, right? So the first time we did a track at Silverstone, it was four of us. And then we did Navarra in Spain for a few days. But this is our biggest one where it's not just the team, it's guests and the team. It usually takes us three to four days to prep and get on track. But we're able to keep shortening that time frame. The next event, it might be half a day and then a couple hours. And so even though it's a lot of legwork and prep work and travel and stuff, ultimately we learn every time and we're gonna make it better and bigger each time we can. So like, did it calm down after a little while? Was it right in the beginning? No, no, it was in the middle of it. Oh, it bad. went out, yeah. I just restarted and then it, the values came back. But it, it'll be fine. I think just in between ones, we just do a quick job. Just What's guys sure coming out here? All right, so show time. So we have a prioritized list of demos we're going to be showing today. The most important being, of course, in the car and actually seeing all the data that we're capturing as they drive around, namely the LiDAR data and the camera data. Some of the demos, however, are really cutting edge and pushing it. And currently we're not showing those. You know, we're pushing ourselves to the limit. We're really trying to get as much things we can show as possible. Uh, fortunately, we have almost everything going. So that's pretty much it. We're ready to rock. Gather around. So this is what we've named Eagle 2. Uh, there was Eagle 1 before this. The objective here is to match the sensor suite that's on the A2RL autonomous F1 car. So with the three LiDAR configuration, with some of the cameras, with the GPS, and basically this lets us take this package anywhere around the world to go design the algorithms we use for perception and localization. And there's so much work that goes into perception and localization that this has just been such a huge leg up for us to test. And in the passenger seat, we have the output of all this being displayed in there. So you see a 360 degree view of uh, what the LiDAR see. Uh, there's object detection in there. So when it sees a race car, it'll put like a bounding box around it, as well as stuff from the cameras and projecting the race line, cross-referencing GPS and, and cameras to give you a visual idea of where the car is going. some challenges this morning already. It was working before a little short line wait. So, all right, you're due to get in this one, but they're just doing a little bit of work on the, to get the screen working again. So you can take a five minute break for a second? Yeah, you maybe pop, pop that off for a minute, yeah? And then, uh, 
you want to go and jump in that one for me? Okay. The computer died. So we're trying to figure out it's like a power thing or I don't know if it got overwhelmed or if it died, but because it is working pretty hard right now. Yeah, I kept, I kept up with it yesterday. Yeah, it was fun. So it's as simple as sometimes as uh, the battery is low on power, so the machine doesn't operate as full capacity, right? And so you realize that and you, you plug it in, it's like you're in high performance mode trying to capture all this data and then the battery drains a little bit. So there's been those challenges. You know, we're really lucky though because all of our team members are specialized in their field. You know, Thomas, our localization expert was realizing that we don't have RTK fixed for our vector nav GPS. And so he was able to, within 30 minutes, hey, I know what it was, spin it up, right? This has happened though because we've done these events before and we have an opportunity to use those previous experiences to learn from our mistakes. Right now we're at lunch, we have a small break, and so we're gonna go run, do a couple laps, collect that data while the guests are off doing panels and other demos upstairs. Please welcome to the stage. I mean, we've talked a lot about the promise of autonomous racing and how the dual use, how that can be applied back to the DOD. We also think it's very important, you know, to bring the DOD leaders that understand the problems to the track. And, um, you know, this is where racing as an industry has always excelled. They're focused on winning, so the technology has to work practically. All right, so you can see we got a good mix here, technology and racing. I think most people who stand a few feet away from it think about NASCAR racing or just a bunch of rednecks that only know how to turn left. But the reality is if you get the opportunity to lift the hood up and look inside, there is a tremendous amount of technology uh, that exists in, in our sport. The rest of the day is kind of shaping up to be hot laps and then we have more demos in the garage behind you that you can't see on screen. We have live feed, a uh, race line over our camera feed. We have a LLM speaking right alongside our stack. And there's a live feed of the sensor car going around the track in the sim. And then there's the live LLM talking about that sensor car going around. Keeping steering inputs minimal through turn three. I'll aim to straight line it while avoiding the curves. So it's very unique and uh, you know cutting edge type of blend of these different hardware software integrations happening. Then we have the physical sim, so we kind of have this like suite of demos with the car, with the hot labs. It's a beautiful day at Circuit of the Americas, and I'm impressed at how fast this McLaren took us around the track. It was awesome. First time in a race car, um, really incredible, amazing. I thought we were going to flip over about 80 times, but um, Cameron took good care of us. That was good, yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It was a great driving experience, super invigorating to go from 160 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour under two seconds. That's a lot of G's. My name's Aaron Puckett. I'm with Trace3 and we're a next-gen solutions provider. So we're out here at Circuit of the Americas checking out what Code 19 is doing. I'm a huge fan of motorsport all the way from sim racing through real-world driving now to AI driving and uh, it's just incredible what they're able to do on track. So um, I think the future is bright and I, I can't wait to see man versus machine in this sort of uh, format. So my name is Eric Seifert. I'm a VP of AI engineering at Booz Allen Hamilton and we're working with Code19 on exploring some improvements to autonomy that can be relevant to racing and also the Department of Defense. And being able to experience firsthand has taught me just how unique this sport is and how hard it's going to be to train artificial intelligence to compete in this space. Some of the hardest challenges in AI and automation don't necessarily exist in the Department of Defense. They're right here. So there's a lot of tech that can transition between the race course and motorsports and what we do for the federal government. Really enjoyed it. Really uh, an amazing experience. Unbelievable. 
Most people have now been in the car. They've had the Velocity Eye passenger experience, but there are hiccups, so there's constant problem solving, constant troubleshooting. Uh, Sam's over here trying to make sure we're getting good data, trying to make sure everything's clean. Um, all in all, I'd say things are going pretty well. The sensor car data is not only unique for the guests because they get that experience, but we're actually, we're collecting tons of data. Um, I think I just checked, it was at least a terabyte and that was four runs of data, right? So this is camera data, which is usually the largest. Um, and we have this really unique three LiDAR sensor setup where you have a, a great front view and then these two angled back. You know, we're capturing all of that as we're running around the track with our guests. So they see it live and we get a chance to take this data and process it afterwards. So. Overall, we have a couple things happening all together concurrently, but the team is able to step in and collect data and then process it after as well. You know, as well as get hot laps as well, because you know, if you're part of the race team, you have to be in the car. Data looks good, but I think we need like five more laps to confirm. <laughs> Actually, I should drive and you can look at it. Right, 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 right. So you can confirm what it looks like. Cool. Well, you need to have the experience too, you know, I'll, I'll drive for you. <laughs> It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome event if you ask me, and we hope to go even bigger next year.